morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, November 16, 2019, 9.02 a.m. I would like to call to order this regular board meeting of Harman Public Schools. Um, we have six board members present. The seventh one is on his way. Uh, he, he's going to be uh, on it a couple minutes late. And uh, our new, newly joined board member, Helen Sherwood, is joining. This is her first um, regular board meeting. She already joined our academic meeting. Uh -huh. So we'd like to welcome her. And uh, we are very happy to have you on board. And so we have quorum. Uh, do we have any public comments? No. All right. So our first item is consent agenda, and <coughs> including consider approval of previous board meeting minutes of October 26, 2019. Consider approval and ratification of the minutes and of the actions of the academic committee meeting on November 1st, 2019. Consider approval and ratification of the minutes and actions of the finance committee meeting on November 1st, 2019. And consider filing minutes day waiver to the TA for HSA Beaumont CDN 101 862004 for Harmon School of Science District 101 862 for September 23rd, 24th, and 25th due to tropical storm in Melbourne. All right, so this is a consent agenda. You know the drill. approval of 2018-2019 audit annual financial and compliance report AFR, AFR as submitted and presented by the independent auditor Woodley Pepp. Good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to invite uh, Ms. Mylene Kornbell from the Pen to present our annual audit report. Jalabjikai and other board members, management, and everyone here. My name is Eileen Kompla from Lithuania, and we are the external auditors for Harmony Public Schools. Selena Seres would love to be here right now. She's the audit partner, but uh, she's currently in uh, Phoenix, Arizona for a uh, firm retreat. On November 1st, we met with the finance, uh, finance committee and we had a meeting explaining the detailed status of the audit process and the results. So we're able to um, explain to them. And today, um, I will be explaining the overview, the results of the audit. And it's the same presentation that we have been right? Yes, okay. that is fine. So I will give the overview. This, the first slide is the, the engagement team. These are the team that uh, we went here, we were on site, and performed the audit process, the audit testing. We have two associates, one senior associate. I myself is the audit manager. Robert Hedip is another manager who is here on site helping with the audit. And Selena Sarisari is the audit partner. We have another partner who performed the engagement quality control review. His name is Tom Peterson. The purpose of the audit is to, perform, uh, is to give the opinion on the report. And there are three kinds of opinion that an external auditor can do, can render for an opinion. The first one is the disclaimer of opinion, which is the red light, which means we cannot give an opinion because one example is because we cannot obtain any backup from the client and supporting documentations for us to conclude an opinion. Second one is the yellow uh, 
yellow signal or a warning, we can we can um, opine that the financial statement is fairly presented. However, there are certain exceptions. A couple of them is due to modification, due to um, scope limitation, or departure from the gap. The third one is what we consider. Um, the third one is what we consider the clean opinion or the green line. This means that the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects, and we did not we did not note any material misstatements. So this is the overview of the audit process during May uh, 2018. We were the team is here was here on site. We performed a testing and performed meetings with different personnel. We also did planning and risk for risk assessment. We did internal controls on which we had meetings with various uh, departments involving crit critical areas. And this is where we determine if we can rely on controls and we can reduce risk of material misstatement. And then when we come back for year end, that's the time that we focus our testing on financial <coughs> statement audit and we perform substantive testing to gather sufficient audit, audit evidence in order for us to render an opinion. In order for us to get an unmodified opinion, we have an assurance packet, which we perform tests of details. This means that we selected a certain transactions to test. We vouch as a result of sampling or individually significant items. And then we perform substantive analytics so an example is the predictive analysis. We also did our ratios and trend analysis in order for us to gather sufficient audit evidence. Since Harmony Public Schools received federal grants in excess of $750,000, then we have to do single audit testing on which we did the test of controls <coughs> and compliance audit. This year, 2019, there are two major federal programs. These are the Title I Part A, Improving Basic Programs, and we also did uh, Title IV Part A because there's a transferability involved from, um, to, from Title IV Part A to Title I Part A. The second one is the Title II Part A, Supporting Effective Instruction. Like what I've mentioned a while ago during the interim field work, we perform internal controls over critical areas, and we had uh, perform inquiries with HR department, payroll, procurement, AP, or accounts payable, cash and investments, information technology, attendance changes, grants, financial flows and reporting, budget, and we also perform uh, campus visits for three campuses. In fiscal year 2019, HP has implemented a new standard. It is the ASU 2016-14. So um, it, it only means that um, for under net assets, instead of in, in previous year, the two classifications are unrestricted or temporarily unrest unrestricted. For uh, this restricted, I'm sorry. For this year, there are only two kinds. It's with donor restrictions and without donor restrictions. If you, you have the copy of the report, it's a note queue of the note disclosure. So on page three of the report, the audit report, you will see the statement of financial position. That's the It's the black one. This statement reflects everything that Harmony Public School owns and owes. So you'll see in the report, the total assets is about 623.5 million. The significant portion of the assets are the cash and investments, which is about 146.8 million. Restricted cash is 32.4 million. The capital assets net of accumulated depreciation and amortization is the biggest one, which is 418.1 million. The total liabilities total 534.9 million. The bonds is, uh, is 388.1 million, and also capital lease liability is added to that, which is about 80.5 million. The ending net assets or net worth of, is about 88.8 million. The breakdown is 
without dollar restrictions is 38.5 million, and then the with dollar restrictions is 58.3 million. The total change in net assets by district is at the schedule at the back of the report. You'll see the various schedules for different districts. You'll be seeing the different uh, net assets, which is uh, for HSS Academy Houston, 1.3 million. For HSA Austin, it's 3.5 million. For HSA San Antonio, it's 3.4 million. For uh, El Paso, it's 2 million. Waco, 1.5 million, 5.1 million, I'm sorry. And then Harmony School of Science, Houston, 1.8 million. And lastly, the central office is about 2.4 million. They're all more, right? They're positive. Yes, they are positive. On page 18, there's a known disclosure about, about bond debt covenant. So, based on our calculation, how many public schools met the debt, the, the debt covenant requirements? The operating reserve is that covers 45 days of budgeted expenses. That is like a good one. For available cash balance right now for Harmonies for fiscal year 2019 is 100.4 million, and it's indicated on note M of the note, note M disclosure. Actually, right now at the act, the cash an actual number of days is 123, 123.9 days. On page four, it indicates the support and revenue in millions. This pie chart will give you the comparison between this year and last year. In fiscal year 2019, the total revenues is 366.1 million compared to fiscal year 2018, which is 345.5 million. You can see that there's a significant change in revenues. It's positive for Harbin Public Schools. The three main sources of revenues, the biggest one is the federal grants, the second one is, I'm sorry, the, the, the biggest one is the state and local grants, 316, 316 million. The second one is federal grants, 34.7 million, and then the other revenues. What's the main reason of increase this year? The main reason is the state and the local revenues. You got more students to get more state funding. for fiscal year 2019 and there's also a comparison between uh, fiscal year 2019 and fiscal year 2018 total expenses. Fiscal year 2019 is approximately 344.5 million. Total expenses for 2018 is 335.2 million. There's a significant change and it's it's directly related to the change in revenue. Of course you have more more students, then there will be more expenses. Part of the increases is because of the increases in salaries, regular compensation, admin increases, increase in number of employees due to addition of you know campus and uh, new campuses. And um, for this one, function 11 instruction, it has the highest um, person allocation for wages and salaries. On slide 14, you will see the opinion uh, that we're rendering for how many public schools based on our audit. Uh, we're glad to, uh, to tell you that uh, there's a modified opinion of our financial statements. There are no internal control findings related to financial reporting, and there are no, there are no findings related to compliance. What's the page number again? The, the, the opinion is found on um, slide 14. However, the opinion is on page one of the report. So 
So the report of independent auditors, so this indicates that our responsibility, management's responsibility, and then if you go to page two, that indicates the opinion. Financial statements. And then we also have to render an opinion in the single audit, the major federal, pro federal programs. This is found on page um, page 79 of the report, starting with page 79. So we are also rendering a modified opinion over each major federal program, and then we noted no internal control findings related to each federal major program. So if you go on page 83, that is the summary of our opinion, the major programs, and the threshold that we use. And Harmony Public School is qualified as a low-risk oddity. Do you have additional questions? How many hours did you spend, your team spent on this report? Very comprehensive and very good. Okay, so about, um, in during field work, interim field work, we're here for about two weeks. So I would say maybe about um, 400, like for the whole audit, maybe about four to five hundred hours. I mean, during I mean during on site, we did a lot of testing. However, after field work, we also had a, a lot of communication with management, and that's part of the audit hours that we spend. Do you also visit campuses, or do you work here always? We we work here a lot, but then we also had to visit three campuses. We did it. We did the same thing last year. So this year, we uh, selected different campuses. So as you can tell, these are really good news, and I was happy to see that in the finance committee meeting as well. And I was the only board member present there, so I asked a lot of my all my questions. So feel free to jump with your questions. I was satisfied with the answers. But this is a really good audit uh, report that tells us a lot about you know the financially and you know uh, in terms of financial accountability. Uh, team is doing a very good job in terms of internal controls and other things. We have really clean report, so it's really good news. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, not that to conclude the discussion, but the next item will be update on the current, I think, one of the items. Mm -hmm. But no, actually, it's just investment report. But we'll, we'll have the current maybe next budget, next mm -hmm. uh, meeting. Uh, any questions, comments? Do we submit this report to any agency or is it just internal? So um, once we, we approve the report and once it was signed, then we'll have to uh, submit it. We will be assisting in the submission. We submit it to the federal like uh, audit clearing house. We did it online. The, the Harmony Public Schools management will certify it. Okay. And I also would like to add that we really appreciate the cooperation and help of management. They were very cooperative and helpful to our audit. That's why it's our second year and it's getting smoother every year. Well, uh, we really appreciate the work with uh, all of you, you, Celine, and I know she wanted to be here, but yes. you know, we, uh, so normally we do our normal, all, all meetings at the end of the month, but this is because of Thanksgiving, we do it earlier. Uh, so it's very professional work. We started working with uh, with Lupin last year, and uh, the feedback we receive and our interaction and uh, the result is very satisfying. So we want to thank the whole team. If you can pass that message from the board, uh, we are very appreciative of your work and with your harmony. And it helps us also to you know know about you know what's going on and you know plan ahead. In, especially now we are in process of it in the middle of the business plan for the next five years. If there's no questions, we need a motion to approve the audit report. 
I make a motion to approve the audit report. Second. Uh, can you can you make your motion like the technical like audit on the annual like it's written? Yeah, I in? make a motion to approve the 2018-19 audit annual financial compliance report AFR is submitted and presented by the independent auditor with the time. Alright, I'll go ahead and make a second. Alright, everyone in favor of approving this motion say aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you. Uh, I think the report has signature pages, right? Uh, oh, it's going to be separate? Or? So these are for us, our copies? Because this has also a signature page. Oh, it's going to be there. Okay. But board members will keep those, the ones who don't want it back. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So our next item is review of quarterly investment report as of September 30th, 
Good morning. Good morning. So um, the discipline procedure has been already updated almost almost two years ago, and we have added it to student handbook. Um, this is just a old policy and needs to be updated accordingly. So it's not a new change or anything, just making it consistent with this policy in the student handbook. So what was it? It was, you know, the um, in the appealing process or the expulsion, it adds one more uh, category as a, as in terms of schools, can be a appealing aid the third level appealing agency before you before they go to vote. So mm -hmm. that was the change back then, almost two years ago. Okay. So it was like the employee, change. like we did, like the employee appeals. No, not the employee. Student 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 student. Student. No, no. But didn't we have this already? Like, see, superintendent wasn't there already. No, no. Four two years ago, no. no, no. It was added, updated in the student handbook, but somehow overseen in the mm. policy. So we're just making it consistent. Okay. And we're just saying there, according to you know the student handbook, what was in the student handbook, so we don't have to change again in two places. Whenever we change in the student handbook, it's changed everywhere. So, mm -hmm. so spare tendency is level three, we are level four. Yes. yes sir. How about the employee? That's what uh, employee is it? Uh, employee uh, was also already there. Oh, it's already, that's yes. what I was saying. Yes. Like we are making it similar to the employee yes. level. Yes, we, yes, we were making it there was a, the inconsistency. Right, so we, we made it consistent, right? Okay. Yes. But the board policy is now very generic and it just refers to the procedures. That's right. So if you change the procedures, you don't have to amend the board policy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, so uh, we need a motion to up, uh, approve this update. So moved. Anyone second? Second. Everyone in favor of approving this motion, say aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ford. Um, all right, so our next item is consider approval of amendment to the memorandum of understanding agreement with Rice University, but the administration told me that there are some uh, you know, recent developments and they need more time to bring it to us. So we, we will table this item for the next meeting. I need a motion. Which one? I'm sorry. The Rice University one. Oh, okay. uh, the eight. Okay. So if anyone can make a motion to table this for the next meeting. So move to table it to the next meeting. Anyone second? I second that. Okay, everyone in favor of tabling item, uh, item Eight uh, to the next board meeting. Say aye. 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 It's approved. All right. Our last action item is uh, consider approval of amended bylaws. So uh, let me give you. Uh, let's just refresh your mind. Uh, give you a, a little bit background, and then I will leave it to Mary. So I don't remember how long ago was this. <laughs> we started this process a long time ago. So. Uh, you met Mary and everyone else knows Mary, so Mary is our uh, board council, she is doing a lot of things for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were some, uh, you know, from time to time, bylaws is not something that you update every year or so. So every five years, every six years, uh, the legislation changes, uh, your, we change our practices, we, our business plan changes and things like that. And then Mary joined us two years ago, two years ago. Uh, as the board, uh, you know, board council, so another set of eyes, different uh, attorney, and so Mary uh, identified some uh, areas that we, it might be better and more practical to change, and so the first step was she going through all the bylaws by comparing it to our current practices, and also things like like we just happened, like now we are updated uh, our policy. It is it says that. For example, the board policy says now whatever in the student uh, hand. So we don't have to every time. So you will see that if you read the changes, most of the changes are instead of we uh, put all the details, which it was, we now say we will follow the Texas uh, Open Meeting Act or Texas Education Code, you know, this and this. So it's more flexible and more adapted because, uh, you know, things change in the legislation when we follow that law, when they change it, we have to change our practice, but we don't have to change our bylaw every time legislation changes. And so majority of changes were like that. 
And so I sit down with Mary, this was the first one. And then the second uh, session was me and Mr. I. We sit together and I explained all the changes and Mr. I took it to his team. And the, we, we got the input from the executive team as well. And then we had another session with Mary and then uh, we start, we took this as a, one of the tasks for governance committee. So I think we did two sessions in governance committee, maybe three. Right. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Koch was there, Ellen was there, Mr. I was there. So we went through the whole changes and Mary had some questions or suggestions or she would say you can do it this way or you can do it this way. Whatever, so I think we got really good feedback from Mr. I as the administration and also some of the board members. So the draft that you see and the board requested that we want uh, plenty of time, like 15 days or 30 days, but I think we gave them like almost three months, four months. So yes. that request was granted in big time. So um, now uh, you have the bylaws in front of you and we are looking for uh, approval to make all these changes. And Mary, uh, if you want to add anything or if you have questions, Mary, oh, we can answer. Yeah, I think it was in August when I sent a copy of the bylaws and I gave you a red line version. I wanted you to place your eyes on it, not only for substantive changes, but if there was anything that didn't sound correct. Because we looked at these over and over and over again. <laughs> Yeah. Even at the end, we sort of missed some things. So um, really, a lot of the changes were just um, to make it comply with the law, but also to give you flexibility. Because it was very specific with regard to certain aspects of the Open Meetings Act. The Open Meetings Act could change every two years. Every time the legislature looks at it, it they can change it. So I made it much more, I suggested that we make it more generic. And that's what a lot of these changes are. And then there were things to just make sure that they comply with what I knew your practices were. So I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Um, hopefully they are, you know, we don't use our bylaws that much, to tell you the truth. These were first, uh, you always have to have bylaws when your organization was first established and then you can restate them and you can amend them. Uh, so I think this was a, a good overall amendment and then as things go on if you want to change them or restate them and amend them later we can always do that yeah. so i have a question so no um board member terms is added or is in there is right. there a reason for that well you that's up to the board so we right now you don't have term limits and you don't actually have terms which was something that we spent a lot of time talking about because there are legal some re legal ramifications of not having terms that is um, something that the board can talk about. Right now, you're a board member until you resign or you're kicked out. Or you die. Or you die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is something we discussed in the governance committee. It was one of the items. We couldn't come to an agreement and uh, for several reasons that I will explain. And so we decided not to delay this process. As Mary says, we can always add or uh, you know ch make changes. Part of it, I mean, we are, all of us are very aware of that. Almost all boards have term and term limits, but at the same time, all high performing charters, none of them has term limits. So we, I communicated, this was like two years ago, with IDEA, KIP, PS, I know all the board chairs. KIP had it, they removed it, PS doesn't you know, apply it, and IDEA same way. And so there are other issues that you know sometimes you don't, you cannot find a really good board member, sometimes you find and then things get, so the alternative was for the governance committee to work on a succession plan for each board member. Mm -hmm. And thinking about the diversity, thinking about the skill set that we do and everything else, and come up with a plan. And at the same time, governance committee to do a review of board members, like feedback to the board and then things like that. So the majority of the committee thought, like instead of now, rushing an artificial term limit which and harmony has some unique uh, properties as well now let's work as a governance committee now that if we approve the bylaws and that's done one of the things is to, you know discuss that um, succession plan and you know other things like that. and at the same time this was the initial feedback that we got like you know maybe work more that why did they remove the term limits? Why is all these high-performing charters? 
I served in the other boards. Yeah, I, I was like region four, I was term limited, like after three years I left. Mm -hmm. You know, the, a lot of nonprofits have term limits, but for some reason charters also don't have. So we want to strike a balance. We don't want to put an artificial limit at the same time. One of the solutions, you have terms, but it keeps renewing. Right. But again, this, yeah, people will know three years. So it is, it has a lot of, so we want to, you know, uh, revisit that. But for now, uh, we said, like, uh, let's, let's keep it like it is. And then, and you know, a lot of moving uh, parts. Like, uh, we were having a new board member, like now. And then Ellen was going to leave, when she was going to leave, and then getting a new board member. It's just, there's so many moving parts, putting a term limit on top of that would be hard. We just have now full seven board members, which I really wanted because our, like the Lone Star training, the academic, making board meeting more academic oriented and outcome oriented, all this are waiting and the business plan. So now we have this and maybe we can go like for a while and then uh, maybe visit that. So that was discussed, but can, can I say something? You technically do have a term, so <coughs> your term is until you resign or you're kicked off. So that technically is a term. What you don't have is a set durational term of three years or four years or five years. Then the term limit is a, is a different issue. You really can't have term limits when you don't have a durational term, when your term is, you know, until something happens. So I, I do think the way, and that's why I, I put it here, the number of qualifications and the term of directors, it used to say tenure, of directors, so your term is until you resign or for some reason the board would vote you off. So that is your term. Mm -hmm. And we have a process in place for voting a board member off? Yeah. Do you have it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have something? I don't know. She's, <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, never. Oh, you should have been here last week. Well, last month. 2.21. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just wondering, because I mean, I'm on board that that is a very difficult thing to, you know, get a board member off and follow their process. It's actually not difficult. I don't want to encourage anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not difficult here. No, it's not it's difficult. It's not difficult. So, so then we have wimps in my other board. And that person <laughs> cannot vote, so it is even easier. <laughs> even easier. Because the majority will be like three, four. All right. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but uh, for your comment, that when you said, Homer, you should be here, you should have been here. You know, you make those comments publicly, so they're on YouTube now, so you can watch them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can watch them. <laughs> so, Mary, I, uh, I just want to say thank you, because I did look at it, and uh, what it was before, as opposed to what it is now, uh, I think that was, was really cool, or really good, in terms of simplifying the process. And uh, being generic, but at the same time, uh, not what we call the consequential, because things in terms of the Open Meeting Act that's already uh, overarching and widening an existing setup. So if there are changes that were made to those kind of the things, then this would follow without making changes to this. And I thought that was really brilliant, so thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. That, that will help us a lot in terms of, because we had, and uh, Mary, you made this comment, I think I vaguely remember this back in the days that you said this looks like a bylaws of a corporation. You said maybe we started, when we first started, we used some example from someone, not a charter, not a, so along the way we kept changing it, but this time this is a major change and it's, I, I like, like what uh, he said, like tying to the laws, to, you know, the code, so if it changes, we are, we are saying that we are going to follow this, so we don't have to, we never too much details, too many no, details, yeah, too many details. We, we don't, I mean, and some of them like you know ma making the meetings certain time certain date and this is something that as a board we keep changing it so we, we shouldn't be have to go back to change bylaws each time we change our meeting because things like that so i think this is a really good first effort work so it's a major change but we can revisit this maybe in a year or so and see if especially with new changes and new uh, all these business developments and uh, business plan development and all that Okay, I have one suggestion for change. Page number four, bottom of the page, just before removal of directors, there's a dot over there. Can we remove that? Say it again, I'm sorry, page four. Page four? Yes. Bottom of the page? Bottom of the page. Remove of directors, just. Oh, I will that. remove that. Yes. <laughs>
then I can say. <laughs> this is what I say no matter how many times you're waiting. Can you tell he's an academician? Yeah. Academics? Yeah. 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 We are yes, absolutely. With that change, I uh, move uh, for approval of the amended bylaws. Second. Okay. Are we asking for a second? Yeah, I'm asking. Oh, I thought you said that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. Yeah. Almost seconded for the record. <laughs> all right, everyone in favor of approving uh, the amended bylaws as presented with that, that change, say aye. 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 It's approved. This is a major item. Thank you, everyone. So, where's the agenda? Next. Okay, so we don't have any more action item. Uh, before the journal meeting, is there any closing remarks? Uh, I actually missed the last journal meeting, uh, as well as the academic, because I'm out of town. So I didn't have a chance to say hello to Helen. Boy, I'm going to miss her, but then there's another Helen here. And so close. And so it's really cool. But, She's yeah. Ellen with an H. Yes. <laughs> but just for the record, uh, that's really the, uh, a dear friend and a mentor for me in the time that I've been on the board. And just for the record, again, you know, I, I will miss her. Uh, and uh, at some point in time, we, I do look forward to having a couple of days again. Sure. And uh, that's the moment I shout my comments. But I enjoy serving with you. I'm looking forward to a cool experience for that as well. Yeah, we had a, you know, I think it was a good uh, goodbye, and then the academic committee had, I missed because I had a training and I came to chair the meeting only, but I think it was a good, very good, uh, you know, thoughtful that academic committee did a separate, uh, you know, farewell to her. I think she was very happy, and I like to say we are, we are very grateful that she, the things that she did and, you know, with all the years. Mm -hmm. And again, very excited to have mm -hmm. I'll also join our board. Uh, any closing remarks? I just want to say uh, the business plan uh, coordination is continued. They have monthly meetings here, and I participate as a, as a member of the steering committee, as a person from the board, and they, we talk with them. It's coming along very really good in terms of some of the items, but they will come, and I think we'll have the December, I think maybe January or February, we, we haven't scheduled it, but they will come to the board to present the initial work and also get your feedback. So uh, I want to involve the board this time more with the business planning. So uh, this is coming, so I just want to update you. Uh, the team is doing a really good job, the, the group. For example, I think it's not finalized, but they have now a, a profile of Harmony graduate. I think I, I liked it a lot. There are so many good things and they get a lot of feedback. They went all campuses, so they are getting collecting data, speaking people, you know, talking to people, uh, finding the issues and areas of improvement. So, and this is going to come to uh, not for the approval, for the uh, updating us and getting our input mm -hmm. as well. So, December is our last meeting for this year. I think they will be ready, maybe January or February. But I, I just want to keep you in, in the loop for that. Okay. With that, we Thank need. You. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn our meeting for today. Okay, second. Second. All right. Uh, everyone in uh, favor of uh, adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned with 45 minutes, including audit report and bylaw update. <laughs> <laughs>